Google pledges $25 million to worker reskilling around AI in Europe as the white collar professional world gets used to the idea that AI is here and here to stay. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. One of the things that we're starting to see happen quite frequently is the companies that are most involved in artificial intelligence, the big AI labs, are starting to share their commitments to helping retrain and reskill the workers of the world for a new AI future. The latest example of this story comes from Google, who has pledged 25 million euros to help European workers learn how to use AI. There are a bunch of different ways that they're going to come at this. First, apparently they have opened applications for nonprofits and social enterprises that can help teach audiences, particularly who might not otherwise have easy access to that training. In other words, there is an equity portion of this where they're trying not just to train folks at the top of the economic period, but anyone who might be impacted by AI. Reuters also reports that Google is going to run a series of what they call growth academies that will help companies who are implementing AI scale their operations, and they're expanding their free online AI training courses to now 18 languages said Adrian Brown, the executive director of the Center for Public Impact, who is coordinating with Google on these nonprofit and social enterprise applications. Research shows that the benefits of AI could exacerbate existing inequalities, especially in terms of economic security and employment. This new program will help people across Europe develop their knowledge, skills, and confidence around AI, ensuring that no one is left behind. Now, of course, part of the reason that companies like Google are investing in this sort of local support is that they're also investing in local infrastructure from a business standpoint. For example, last month, Google announced that it was investing about a billion dollars to build a data center outside of London, meaning that this is all part and parcel of a larger plan. You might remember that recently we heard from Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella that the company was planning on helping train 2 million Gen Z workers in India with tech skills as well. Now, this is obviously not just corporate philanthropy, and it's obviously not just PR. Having a more informed public, especially one that is familiar and has adapted to your particular tool set, is quite in the interest of these big companies. Now, big tech is a bellwether for the AI space in a number of different ways right now. Obviously, on the one hand, everyone is watching the products that they're actually putting out. There is an AI arms race between these companies. Microsoft and Google, for example, both, as we just discussed, had AI-related ads in the Super Bowl last night. Google has Gemini, and they've just rolled out Gemini Advanced, which is the first GPT-4 class model that isn't from OpenAI. And so one way in which the world is watching what these tech companies are doing is just what the state of the art is when it comes to the technology itself. However, another part is that they are a leading indicator, or at least they appear to be, of how different industries are going to adapt to the AI revolution. And that includes the scary part of people losing their jobs. The Financial Times published a piece this morning, Tech Companies Axe 34,000 Jobs Since Start of Year in Pivot to AI. The data comes from layoffs.fyi and shows that a total of 138 tech companies have laid off staff this year, including Microsoft, Snap, eBay, and PayPal. Now, this continues a trend from 2023, where 263,000 jobs were cut across the tech sector in that year. The big question when it comes to these types of layoffs is what's driving it. It is very easy to get scary-sounding headlines that say it's just because AI, but there's also clearly other things going on as well. First of all, there is a recalibration after pandemic-era growth. During the pandemic, many companies thought there would be bigger fundamental changes to the ways in which people lived and workers worked than have actually shown up. There was also a glut of cheap money as interest rates crashed to zero and monetary and fiscal support were hugely forthcoming, which led to an overall period of overinvestment and overhiring. So one part of the shift over the last couple of years is a recalibration to that post-pandemic world that is different in terms of expectations and how much has actually shifted, but also in terms of the financial reality of a new post zerp era financial world. What investors are valuing, both private and public, looks different than five years ago. The growth at any cost technology era of startups, for example, is increasingly a thing of the past. So to some extent, part of these job losses can be traced back to that. Now, a second part of this does have to do with AI, but not necessarily in a negative way. What I mean by that is that many of these companies are shifting what they spend their time focusing on. They're investing increasingly in generative AI as an area, and that means they need to bring in different types of talent, different types of skills, and different types of expertise. In many cases, that's going to mean less focus on other previous things. For example, as Spotify CEO Daniel Ek said earlier this month, We need to become more efficient by deprioritizing some of the existing things, but we also need to invest in some of the new. Now, of course, deprioritization showing up at layoffs is very difficult for the people who are affected, but it's not AI disruption in the sense that we normally talk about of AI taking people's jobs. 
it's that the shift to AI is putting a premium on different types of skills and making other things that people had previously been working on relatively less valuable to those companies. There is, however, another part of this which is much more the big concern around AI, which is people's jobs becoming redundant because of the application of AI. This is happening, for example, at Meta and Google, both of whom see a huge portion of their revenue come from advertising, and who are in fact increasingly seeing efficiency gains by having AI do things that humans used to do, particularly in the self-serve ad platforms that both of these companies offer advertisers. AI can be used to things like help with copy and help with visuals that previously were someone's job. And so in that way, AI really is impacting the nature of the jobs that are available, and tech is sort of acting as a canary in the coal mine for where that might come to bear in other areas. You see this showing up all over the media. The Wall Street Journal, for example, wrote a piece this morning, AI is starting to threaten white-collar jobs. Few industries are immune. The piece points out something that we have discussed extensively on this show. Quote, Unlike previous waves of automation technology, generative AI doesn't just speed up routine tasks or make predictions by recognizing data patterns. It has the power to create content and synthesize ideas. In essence, the kind of knowledge work millions of people now do behind computers. That includes managerial roles, many of which might never come back, say corporate executives and consultants. Now, some people have tried to actually figure out how many of these job cuts are actually directly related to AI. One firm, Challenger, attributes more than 4,600 job cuts to AI, with the majority of those happening in media and tech. That said, they also think that the actual number is probably higher, since companies aren't necessarily super keen on tying layoff announcements to AI adoption. Now, at the same time, the use of generative AI by professionals is also going up. For example, the share of employees who use generative AI at least once a week by industry has jumped up massively between June 23 and November 23. In the technology field, it went from around 55% to 75%. In financial services, around 35% to around 60%. In healthcare and life sciences, from around 30% to over 50%. So clearly a lot of bottom-up adoption happening. Interestingly, people's self-assessment of AI also tells the story of a technology which could have a huge and dramatic impact. Once again from WSJ, according to an Oliver Wyman study, more than half of senior white-collar managers surveyed said they thought their jobs could be automated by generative AI, compared with 43% of middle managers and 38% of first-line managers. All of those numbers are extremely high, given that people are talking about their own jobs. Now, one of the things I think to watch for this year is where some of these issues actually show up. So far, they've been largely theoretical, but as these layoffs actually happen, they will start to give us a little bit of a picture of which roles are being automated away versus which types of tasks are being automated away and what the consequences of those decisions are. Last week, I shared with you another study from Rutgers University, which found that while 3 in 10 workers in the U.S. are worried about their job being eliminated entirely by AI, 7 in 10 are very or somewhat concerned about employers using AI in human resource decisions. In other words, AI deciding who gets hired, who gets fired, and who gets promoted. Al Jazeera wrote a piece today that also shows how this is starting to come up more and more. It's called As Corporate America Pivots to AI, Consumers Rejected for Loans and Jobs. Now, this isn't about human resource decision making, but it is about AI-based systems without easy human recourse, making very critical decisions for people's lives without the ability for them to go appeal those decisions. My guess is that we're going to see a lot more of this type of story this year as companies actually start to adopt AI and put it into these particular areas. No matter what, this is going to be a key theme of 2024 and beyond, and so I will continue to share when interesting news about it comes up. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.